Britain's first wind farm was built in 1991 by enthusiastic Cornish farmers, the Edwards. Their thinking was ahead of the time. But how well can it compete with other forms of energy, say coal? Is it as cheap as those? It's not quite as cheap as coal or the other forms of fossil fuel, but have you taken into account the cost of the acid rain that is produced from the coal? This turbine here produces none of those at all. 30 years later, and wind is in line to become the new king of British energy. With relatively shallow waters around its 2,000 miles of coast, Britain currently produces 10 gigawatts of electricity offshore and is on course to become the world's biggest offshore wind farmer. What the government's targets are, they want to do five times that. So they want to do 50 gigawatts by 2030. You watch. 50 gigawatts would more than cover Britain's electricity demand. Helping reach that target is the Siemens Gamesa factory in Hull. The turbine blades made here are used by the world's biggest wind farm companies. Here we go. Look at that. Hey, precision aerodynamics on an industrial scale, is that? That's a monster, isn't it? Bigger than a jumbo jet, nine buses. Go on, give us another one. 81 meters, yeah, we'll just say that. She big, mate, she's big. Load of trade secrets, so we're sort of honored that they let us in, but they're gonna be a bit cautious of what they let us film, so we will see how we get on, we'll see how we get on. 2,000 blades have been built here since the factory opened in 2016. Guy is going to help make a few more. It starts with the laying of hundreds of glass fiber sheets into a gigantic mold. The blade is cast in one piece to guarantee strength. All right, mate. We look at that laser first. Ah, right, on that one there, yeah. You see the laser mark in the middle. You see, laser mark there, laser mark there. That's where the end of the sheet comes. You see, there. About 26 hours each blade in the laying. Is that right? Yeah. Can I do another one? Of course you can. Thank you. Cheers. You finish these, because I don't fancy these. <laughs> <laughs> Blades like these are designed to last for 25 years. Early wind turbines were made of fiberglass that couldn't be recycled and so had to be sent to landfill. A more sustainable process is now being developed. One of them they've come out with a sort of biodegradable resin so they can dump it in acid and then you can reuse the fiberglass. So that could go in the caravan or the boat or the, or the next blade, I suppose, yeah. The next stage sees the top half of the mold lifted into place, an enormous piece that takes one hour to manoeuvre. I can't tell you how heavy it is. Top secret, trade secret, boys. Well, it's heavy enough, add all those numbers together, it's on. Once the fiberglass sheets and resin have been baked in the mold, the blade emerges in its raw state, ready to be painted. Sorry. Yes, yes. The cameraman, where's the cameraman? Okay. Two hours to apply the primer, two hours to apply the top coat, about four hours for it to go off. The finish we're looking for is nothing too flash, nothing too shiny, a bit of a matte finish, to be honest. We don't want it, um, we don't want it too glossy. It can cause bother with the aviation industry. Reflecting the sun, yeah, yeah, it causes a bit of bother. After paint, it is time for the finishing touches and a marginal gain to help the blade extract maximum energy from the wind. What are we calling it? VG. VGs, yeah, uh, vortex generators, yeah. Vortex generators. Nervous, right? Yeah, so you find it does just sit on the tear. These tiny fins smooth out the air as a blade passes through it. And just give it a press in between the fins. So the next blade round enters smooth flow rather than turbulence. They said it was yeah. like 1% more efficient. The tip of the blade's moving like 360 miles an hour as it yeah. goes round. You're right. So it's like massive force at 1% makes all okay. the difference. Massive difference. Yeah. massive difference. Massive difference. Yeah. Fair play. These fins will have to survive North Sea winds for 25 years so everything has to be securely stuck down. The final check is done with a spring hammer 
listening for dead spots. How's that sound? It sounds like there's a little bit of air sort of running along that top. Just there? Yeah. So get the bottom of that and just push it on, not too hard, and just run it across. Yeah, so just like that, squidging all the, the air out, basically, all the excess sealing. You, sometimes you hear it. Yeah, let's give it another tap. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, happy enough? Yeah, yeah. Tom, you are the man. Thank you very much. No worries. Look at that down there. Get your camera down that line, boy. See, Tom knows what he's doing. You're not messing about, boy. After four weeks, the B-81 blade is finally ready to be loaded onto a ship and delivered offshore.